In this video, you are going to learn how to optimize your LinkedIn profile so that it can be discovered by recruiters or hiring managers, according to Austin Henline from LinkedIn. Austin, Leanne and I connected for a Twitter space over on the Scrimber Twitter account where Austin explained, when you have a resume, that only works for you when you apply, but a well-optimized LinkedIn profile works for you whilst you sleep, as people can discover you any time of the day. When we spoke with Austin, he convinced us that there are three main reasons for new developers to be on LinkedIn. Number one is to be discovered by recruiters. Also, LinkedIn is a social network, right? Where you can connect with people, share posts and so on, reach out in someone's DMs. And finally, it's a place where you can discover and apply to jobs. In this video, we're going to talk specifically about how you can be discovered by employers on LinkedIn. And then once you're discovered, how to make sure your profile stands out so that they want to spend some of their precious LinkedIn in-mail credits to reach out to you and invite you potentially to some kind of interview view. For the other two topics, check out the full recording with Austin in the description. The first thing you need to understand fundamentally about LinkedIn and how to get discovered is that LinkedIn is a search engine for recruiters. Not unlike we as developers would Google for a coding error, recruiters are going to search on LinkedIn for a specific candidate. If you are not featuring keywords that the recruiters are searching for in your profile, it's practically impossible to be discovered. This leads to two natural questions, right? The first one is what keywords do you include? And the second is where do you include them on your profile? Well, Austin's advice in terms of finding out what keywords to rank for is to go onto the jobs pages and find a minimum of seven to 10 jobs that you would potentially be interested in applying to. So say you want to be a React JS developer, find seven or 10 junior level or entry level React JS jobs. And what you could do actually is import them into a word cloud tool to visualize what are the most common keywords. But otherwise you can just pass and use your best judgments. Those will represent the keywords that you should include in your profile. As for where to include them, this is something of an art and a science. Austin recommends and leads by example when he says that you should add to the bottom of your about section almost like a list of keywords that you would like to be discovered for. This is not the place to be humble either. You can list as many skills as you want. What I would say is that it won't serve you greatly to, you know, duplicate the same word a bunch. So again, say you want to be a React developer, you probably don't want to just write React a hundred times in your about section. But when I asked Austin about this, he explained that there is a benefit in taking that same primary keyword in this case and massaging it into each individual section of your profile. So it could be in your headline, it could be in your about section, it could be under your work experiences section, your project section, your skill section, you get the idea. Remember, you only want to include keywords that reflect what you can actually do and your specific skills. So in this case, don't mention React if you don't know React, obviously. But if you are wondering as a new developer what the threshold is to say, hey, I know this skill on your LinkedIn profile, Austin encourages you to err on the side of the beginner side. And if you still need some assurance, what you could do is complete a LinkedIn skills assessment. This is available to every LinkedIn user. You just look for the skill and they will quiz you on it. So here's a CSS skill assessment, for example. If you can pass the skill assessment with any degree of success, you could include it on your profile. And then during the interview process, if challenged, you can explain that this is something that you are currently in the process of learning. That's perfectly okay. What I would say, and you'll see this as a kind of theme going forward now, I think, is don't disqualify yourself, right? The purpose of a LinkedIn profile or a resume, frankly, is to get you that first screening call. From there, you have an opportunity to further demonstrate your potential and your personality, and that can do wonders for you compared to a somewhat generic looking LinkedIn or resume. Uh, because as much as you might try, this is something that recruiters see every day, it's fairly impersonal. But if you can get on the phone call, you're a real person, and now you have a chance to show your enthusiasm and your determination. As a new developer, it might be tempting to start reaching for additional skills and especially soft skills. And this is why we see a lot of people describe themselves as detail orientated or as a problem solver, a good communicator. But actually recruiters are not really searching for these specific words. And so they won't help you be discovered. And in fact, once a recruiter does land on your page, it can look a bit samesy when really this is a precious opportunity for you to stand out and demonstrate either your hard skills or some project you've worked on or something like that. 
with that in mind, if there is a soft skill that you particularly want to express, you know, maybe make it as specific as possible. So instead of good communication skills, you can explain that you're a good presenter, first of all. And then secondly, try your best to link it to an actual accomplishment or a project at work. So you could say, I presented this project to this audience and it generated this result. Finally, it is not unreasonable to assume that LinkedIn might prioritize your profile in search results or at least make you more discoverable if you have good profile hygiene. That just means that you've filled in all of the sections to a high standard. The first thing which a lot of new developers get wrong actually is the headline section because if you're coming from a previous job or you've never worked professionally as a developer, you can feel a bit sheepish calling yourself a developer since you've never actually done that job. And so what a lot of people do is they will say, you no know, aspiring developer or worse, they will put their existing job title, which could be like, you know, customer service representative or something like that. But obviously recruiters aren't searching for aspiring developers. Again, don't disqualify yourself. And they are certainly not searching for, you know, customer service rep or something like that. You really want to make that headline of your profile, which is the bit beneath your profile picture and that appears in search results, the job title that you want. So, you know, React developer, for example. In your about section, we can learn a lot from Austin. He's done a much better job than I have. And he explains and advises that you tell something of a story, something to make you more memorable and relatable in that about section. And then building on the advice from previously, you can add a sort of skills list at the bottom of your about section, really just a comma separated list of keywords you would like to rank for. And there is no need to be humble here. You can cram in as many as you want, or at least as many as you would like to be discovered for. You want to fill in your experiences section, much like you would a resume. Some very good advice is to start each point in your resume with an action verb. Here is, and I will link in the description, a list from Harvard of action verbs you can pick from. This is also your chance to massage in the keywords you would like to rank for as well. Maybe instead of saying, you know, you built a or contributed to a project, you specifically will now say it's a React project, potentially increasing your chance of being discovered. Going down a little bit, you'll find the skills section, which again, you probably want to put keywords and skills that you would like to rank for. You can list up to 50 Austin Tortors, and again, there's no need to be humble here. You can just cram in as many as you want. You can take the skill assessments if you want to sort of vet yourself, but they won't make a huge difference apparently to your discoverability or really a recruiter or employer's impression from your profile. A good profile picture is what we call table stakes. Like it's the minimum thing you need to sort of sit at the table and it should be a sort of professional Professional, ideally, you know, friendly, inviting, approachable looking headshot. After all, you want someone to approach you for a job, you know, no group pictures, no pictures from a night out, certainly not both. You can use a tool like Canva and it costs a few bucks for this feature, I think, but this will allow you to sort of crop your background to make any photo look a bit more professional. You certainly don't need like a professional photographer or anything like that. Not even a good camera actually It's quite accessible. It's just about knowing what to make your profile picture to look like and here are some examples on the screen right now to inspire you. We're just sort of blitzing through some of the most important skill sections according to Austin and we talked a little bit and you can learn more about this in the recording about the recommendations section. Certainly do not engineer your recommendations. Do not sort of manipulate them or exchange recommendations with people you don't know because an employer will see right through it and it probably doesn't reflect that well on you as it is a little bit disingenuous and makes you seem less approachable actually. But that being said, one good recommendation, one genuine recommendation is certainly a good thing. Better than none, absolutely. And what you absolutely can do is reach out to people who maybe you haven't worked with as a developer, but maybe you worked on a different type of project at school or at work, and they can vouch towards your sort of work ethic and how you coordinate and conduct yourself in projects. Again, this can carry a lot of weight and really be the thing that separates your profile from others. And there is a small chance this kind of thing sends a signal to LinkedIn about the quality of your profile, although it's really hard to know that for sure. Hopefully you can now take this advice and apply it to your own profile for great success. 
Definitely let Austin and I know how you got on in the comments down below. The thing I really respect and appreciate about Austin is that he practices what he preaches, which means if you check out his profile, which is linked in the description, you're going to see these exact same practices applied. You can also follow Austin while you're there because he shares great career tips. You're also welcome to follow me where I share successful stories about new developers who just got their first junior developer job, as well as other tips for new developers about learning to code and breaking into the industry. And if you are looking to get your first junior developer job and you haven't heard of or tried out Scrim com yet, definitely check out our interactive front and developer career path designed to take people from not knowing much or any code to being able to code at a hireable level. Crucially, towards the end of the career path, we have some modules dedicated towards LinkedIn by Randall Connor, who is the renowned author of the Standout Developer book. And we even have some modules on interview questions and how to crack the React.js coding interview with Cassidy Williams, with whom, by the way, I co-hosted a sort of mock React.js job interview. So if you're kind of wondering what comes after the LinkedIn profile, what comes after the interview, you can maybe check out that video linked on screen to see what it's all about. My name is Alex Boker. Thank you so much for watching. Just while you're leaving, please do remember to like the video and subscribe to the Scrimba channel, and we will see you next time.